Go 1.24 was released a couple of hours ago and it has some really awesome features. I don't want to waste your time, so let's jump in and see what's new. First up, type aliases can now be generic, allowing them to have parameters like a defined type. In this example, we have our generic defined type on line one, but if we wanted to do the same for type aliases, we weren't able to until now. Another awesome feature is the subscribe button. Try it out. Back to Go 1.24 though, it now has weak pointers. These are like normal pointers, but don't keep objects alive, and they allow the garbage collector to free the memory. In this example, we have a blob type and a pointer to a thousand kilobyte blob. A regular pointer prevents the garbage collector from reclaiming the memory, but if we use a weak pointer via weak.make and get the original value with pointer.value, the garbage collector is able to free the memory. This results in pointer.value returning nil when its original value has been reclaimed. Weak pointers will be great for implementing a cache of large objects, ensuring that an object isn't just kept alive because it's in the cache. But what if we wanted to run a cleanup function when the blob is garbage collected? Before you'd have to do something complex with set finalizer, but the use of that is now being discouraged in favor of the new add cleanup function. Add cleanup attaches a function to an object that runs when it's no longer reachable. Multiple cleanups can be attached to the same pointer, and the function can take in arguments useful for passing in resources that you want to clean up. Possibly my favorite change though is the new tool directive for go.mod. This allows you to specify executable dependencies without the need for empty tools.go workarounds. You can add tools easily with one command and it will update your go.mod with the new directive. Now let's talk about the Swiss, specifically Swiss tables. Go has changed the underlying map implementation to use Swiss tables. This means around 30% faster access and assignment for large maps. This makes iteration faster across the board by around 10% and 60% faster iteration for low load maps. The implementation of sync.map has also been changed to a concurrent hash try map. This was offered in the unique package in Go 1.23. It outperforms the previous implementation on nearly all benchmarks. If you're a security conscious dev, you'll love this next one. There's a new os.root type which restricts file system operations to a specific directory. The open root function opens the directory and any methods on this root can only operate in that specific directory. This helps prevent path traversal attacks. JSON also got some changes with the new emit zero tag helping to clear up some confusion with emit empty. If the field has an is zero method, it will use that for its determination. Otherwise it will use the zero value for its type. Testing and benchmarking got some upgrades with context support in both their packages. The context method will return a context that is canceled right before the cleanup functions are called. This replaces the old method of creating a cancelable context and then canceling it when the tests complete. There's also new change directory methods to change the working directory for the duration of the test or benchmark, restoring it back to the original value once the benchmark or test is complete. Another quick feature is the testing.b.loop. This is a faster and less error prone method than the for range b.n. Another powerful testing feature is synthetic time. Say you have a function that has a wait in it, maybe for a minute. When you're testing this, it's annoying to actually have to wait for that whole minute. The new testing slash sync test package and its sync test run method changed time package methods to use a fake clock, allowing for instant testing. We got some more iterators in the strings and bytes packages. First up is lines, which gives you an iterator over new line terminated lines in a string. We've also got split seek and split after seek. Split seek returns an iterator over substring split by a separator, while split after seek includes the separator in the output. For handling whitespace, there's field seek, which splits around any whitespace characters. And for more complex splitting, fields function seek lets you provide a function to determine split points, like this example of splits on any non alphanumeric characters. Go's crypto package got some nice upgrades as well with three new additions. There's SHA3 support with the new crypto SHA3 package. They've also added HKDF for key derivation and PBKDF2 for password hashing. And a bonus one, the crypto slash ran.txt function returns a cryptographically random string using the standard base32 alphabet. If you're doing any serious crypto work, these are going to make your life a lot easier. The HTTP package got a nice quality of life improvement with new protocol fields for both servers and clients. Instead of dealing with complex configuration, you can now just tell Go which HTTP versions you want to support. You can choose between HTTP 1, HTTP 2 over TLS, or even unencrypted HTTP 2 if that's your thing. It's a small change, but it makes protocol configuration way more straightforward. Last but definitely not least, the Go build, install, and test commands now accept a JSON flag to output structured JSON. That's all. Check out the full release notes in the description. Are you excited for any of these changes? If so, let me know in the comments down below. While you're there, subscribe, and as always, see you in the next one.